today's big finish of choice. Our oh, seventh Doctor story. Of your choice. My choice. Fires of Vulcan. Yes. I had a bit of trouble picking one here, I have to be honest. Really? Because there wasn't that much great choice, at least of the ones that I've listened to. Uh, what right. did you think, overall thoughts? Right, there are some things I liked about it. Okay. Definitely. Yeah. Um, but overall, I just... I couldn't quite get into it as much as I wanted. Right. I mean, the setting is really good. Mm. You know, a big... one, A pretty big historical moment. Yes. Uh, quite a tragic one as well, I guess. Um, but... There just wasn't much to the actual... I guess events of this of this particular story and right. the, and the yeah you know, the characters were okay but yeah. I just didn't quite connect with it or find myself as interested as past big finishes. Yeah, f- fair enough. Um, have you been to Pompeii? No, you've not. You've not, have you? No, I, 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 I have to... been. <laughs> so I've been to Pompeii. I've not been to Italy at all. No, okay. So I've been to Pompeii and I've actually seen it as well. Okay. Which, so I, I guess I could imagine it probably a bit more realistically. Yeah. <laughs> I can, I, you know, although when I saw it, it was like it is at the beginning of this story, uh, excavating it and ruins and all yes, that. Yes, of course. <laughs> yeah, it starts uh, later. It opens yeah. up with Unit uncovering... The... Okay, no, so it does. Yeah. yeah. So it does start in the more recent day and yeah. then goes back to the main setting of the story. Have we had a unit in a big finish? No, I don't, not that I've heard anyway. No, well they are in some stories but okay. this is the well, first, this is, first one for us. Yeah. yeah, this is the first one for us. I mean they're not in it very much, just a couple of quick things. Yeah, I'm not even sure why they're there though. Why are they, uh, why are they in Pompeii? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Are they in Pompeii? I can't quite remember. It was ages ago. Were they just called in when they discovered the box? Uh, I thought it was an intriguing start, though, because you, instantly you've got questions. You know, how did the TARDIS get there? Yes, definitely. Uh, is the main one, <laughs> and I guess the only one. They're in, so they go back to Pompeii, and it's Volcano Day. Not quite Volcano Day. It, it's approaching. There's yeah. always the thought in the back of your head. Yeah, you know what's going to happen. It's going to happen. The moment you, you, you know where it is, you know where the story's going to go, really, don't you? Yeah, more or less. <laughs> more or less. How are they going to get out of Pompeii with the TARDIS gone? It's A lot of this is just kind of looking for where the TARDIS is. Yeah. Although I will, I will say the, the cliffhanger to part one was actually quite, was actually quite good. The realisation that the TARDIS is not only lost, but it has to be. Yeah, the whole messing with time. Yeah, you know, um, the Doctor doesn't like to do that usually. So, mm. yeah, it's a bit of a shock to the system to realise that they might have to stay at Pompeii. Yeah. We could just have sort of Aztec vibes of not messing with history, not even one line. You can't rewrite history! Not one line! In part one, we go into a bar again. That's true! <laughs> that is true! If this is the third time now <laughs> that we've had a bar early on. What is it with big Finnish stories and opening them Well, you, it's bars. easy to provide the sound effects for it. You know, They're just using the same ones. And, yeah. <laughs> Maybe! How many variations can you have on standard bar? It's the same yeah. wherever you go, whether it's <laughs> all, uh, Victorian England, uh, ancient Pompeii, or... The 70s Cornwall. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I loved the music from right from the off. Yeah, it was it was pretty good. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really have too much to say. It was, it was good music. Um, mm. I think towards the end there were some quite good ones. Yeah. Uh, in the final part, there was a couple of moments where it really stood out yeah. and added to the, to the weight of the scene. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think to get the music chat, like let's do that now. Okay. My, my, this, for me, the standout moments are, are are the music. Okay. But particularly the cliffhanger to part two, uh, where Mel is being yes. taken away. Yeah. But I don't know if it's a pentatonic scale that he's using the composer, but it felt very very ancient Roman, but also Doctor Who and orchestral. 
thought it was really, really nice. Really, really good music. Yeah, so kind of like with the the pirates, like it captures the it captures the setting, but it also feels like Doctor Who. Absolutely. Good job. Okay, um, I thought again back to the first part. I thought it was quite fast paced, uh, like a lot of them. Clear, you know, the band you're introducing all of the characters very quickly. Yeah, bar fights, the earthquakes that are happening. Um, yeah, nice foreshadowing as to what will happen. Yeah, well, you, yeah, well, foreshadowing, foreshadowing the in obvious. The story. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, introducing Eumachia and Mar- right. Maranus. <laughs> And Popidius Celsinus and Agle. Okay, Mo- yeah, most of these I've spelt wrong in my notes. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, that, yeah, that was that was definitely something about it. Yeah, fast paced, a lot of names introduced. Mm. Um, yeah, so trying to keep up with them and who's who was a was another thing to deal with in this uh, in this story. But yeah, yeah. Um, it is interesting, actually. The the only real plot point that does happen is them losing the TARDIS. I felt like the bar fight thing was kind of sidetrack. It it doesn't really play a part this early on. It comes yeah. back in later. Yeah, it's a small, it's a small ish thing that happens. It's there for you to think about. It's occasionally brought back yeah. throughout until, of course, the end. Yeah. But yeah, it's not much of a focus. Yeah, at all. I, I did. I just did think the pacing was a bit off. Particularly, like it becomes slower in part two and three. Yeah, that and was I think one of my issues. Front loaded a lot of it. The Seventh Doctor mm-hmm. and Mel. Yes. Um, yeah, it's mostly them exploring uh, Pompeii and just like seeing what's going on, and of course meeting all these other characters. There was some kind of themes, I guess, of faith. In a way, mm. you know, and belief and yeah. why and the way people interpret why certain things are happening, like yeah. the the earthquakes being, you know, like the wrath of Vulcan, right? And yeah, 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 things along that line. So I thought mm. there may be something there. Yeah, no, definitely. Part one generally was a setup, was setting up the rest of it, um, and, and of course, yes, the cliffhanger with. The TARDIS needing to be uh, trapped so that it could be discovered was yeah. was quite interesting. It's a different kind of cliffhanger. Yeah. Well, with Mel and the Doctor, I kind of wrote down that it felt more like an ace season storyline. With the character development that Mel gets and the behaviour of the Doctor, it feels sure. more like yeah. perhaps how an Andrew Cart Mel story might have been with <laughs> Mel. <laughs> An Andrew Cart Mel story. Ah. <laughs> uh, the the sound the sound design in part two and you know really getting into that it really it really does feel quite atmospheric. I thought feels oh, yeah, like you're actually good. on holiday in Italy. <laughs> One thing I did not like though was the 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 theme tune with Sylvester McCoy. I don't know if I picked up on that. What? Uh, well, it's the the original Delia sixties theme. Or 60s and 70s theme. Oh, you mean the use of... Oh, the actual yeah. opening theme. Yeah. I, I don't know Rather what the... Rather than the, the, the Kef one. I, yeah, I don't know what the thought <laughs> processes were with choosing that, because... I assume they weren't able to get hold of it. The pirates had the trial of a time lord. Yeah, but that was later, so they might have got the rights to use it or something. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, they used that same one in Marion cons- Conspiracy, so maybe they just thought, it's a nice and simple theme version to use for the beginning. But maybe the Kef one specifically, they had trouble. Okay. Rather than the, the Dominic Glynn one. Mm. The trial one. I don't know. It didn't really bother me that much. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, part two, sl- much, much slower down. I, f- I felt like not much actually happened in this part. You know, locking people up, escaping. Yeah, yeah a bit of uh, meandering. Yeah, Marinus going, oh, that doctor bloke, I'll get him back. <laughs> Yeah, uh, they get invited to a dinner. I think in this part. Yeah, that, I mean that's that's kind of the only moment with like, I guess, long term stakes, mm. uh, especially considering how that ends. Yeah, and there's a sacrifice that, as well, before the dinner. Uh, mm. But yeah, I mean, yeah, it just felt kind of standard, a bit slow. Uh, what I did like was the more educational aspects. It very much reminded me of things like the Aztecs again, 
you know, how they eat lying... I don't know if you did this, you ever studied it, how Romans eat lying down on no, the side. You know, there's some education... It reminds me of when I kind of studied this stuff for a bit. <laughs> um, uh, it's good that... It's good that it was able to, you know, bring back some memories. Yeah. And stuff. And did you a... learn... Did you know that? I don't think I did. I, I mean, I vaguely remember covering the, like, the Suvius eruption. But... Yeah. But I don't think we went into that uh, that much detail about life in the, that that point. Yeah, so. I, I liked some of those aspects of it. Actually. Yeah, and that's actually something that Doctor Who um, did very well, and maybe still does to an extent, is giving you a bit of education, whether it be about history or science. Yeah, it's what makes it a a good family show. <laughs> yeah, and something for the kids outside yeah. of the monsters and well, I suppose. That's... Again, there's so many characters, and they're all kind of a bit average. I thought. Yeah. Um, no, no, one, no, no one particularly memorable. The the, the Aglay and Mel relationship that happens, the friendship that they form, again feels like something that Ace would have. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is just like spur of the moment. And yeah. Yeah. But, but yeah, other than that, the bits that were happening, yeah. like oh, Doctor and Mel are back again, or. Pop hideous Celsinus. So yeah. Um yeah, like prevents Mel from leaving yeah. in some place, you know. Just little bits like that really. Okay, so part three, the doctor comes to Mel's rescue with good old hypnosis. <laughs> yes. Yes, of course. Uh, uh I mean well it's not too often that he does that. No, I think the fourth doctor did it a little bit, and the seventh doctor. Yeah, but that's more the master's thing. It is more the master's thing. I think it's implied that time lords can do this, but generally, not. Don't they don't use it often? Mm. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, it's a. It should be used in certain circumstances very carefully. Yeah, and the um, master just. Of course, he does. Doesn't all care. The time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so part, part three, I, it did feel like, as you get towards it, it, it kind of feels a bit more doom-laden, like the rumblings that are going on of the earthquakes getting more and more. There's a feeling of dread and doom. That's Yeah, you get the sense that it's along. nearing closer, like a race against time. Yeah. Uh, not quite. Not quite that exciting, but it's, as I said earlier, you're always thinking that it's about to happen. Yeah. And I think that's that's kind of one of the, the biggest praise I think for this story is the atmosphere and the, the the yeah just the sound design of what's going on and evoking those emotions. I think the plot is not as good as that, and the acting is pretty decent yeah, too. <laughs> yeah, that was that was one of my main points as well. Is that I enjoyed the yeah I enjoyed the voice performances even though I I wasn't really into the actual characters or yeah. the events but yeah, i just wish i was more interested in, yeah in the moment, like you said, moment yeah like you said part three is not much happening again people trying to escape convince other people to leave where's the tardis oh no we've got we've been taken to this other place tardis isn't here we've got to find it or we're gonna die there's no eruption happening you know is there is there like a term for that kind of storytelling maybe <laughs> i'm not sure <laughs> last few minutes kind of pick up a bit more we have a double cliffhanger of the doctor being charged by uh this is where moranus come moranus storyline moranus comes yeah. yeah moranus i kept hearing moranus ah <laughs> moranus well we kind of learn about what's been happening with the tardis yeah and how there may be a, a small window of hope to get yeah. back yeah it's moved around because i guess it's a it's an item of interest. Yeah, this is a, a thing that I had a problem with again, perhaps at the beginning of this, of part three, or even the end of part two, is the Doctor kind of just feels like he's given up and he's not doing anything. <laughs> and he's just, like, Mel's getting taken away. He's like, no, I don't care, no, it's your own fault. You're all going to die. And he's like, yeah, he's a bit moody. He's a bit moody. He doesn't seem to care. Is kind of... That is not... And it's yeah, a, I did def 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 did think. have a problem with that. It's not what you think of. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I mm. did have a problem with that. Um, I don't know where that has come from. 
<laughs> to be honest. It's a bit weird, I found. I don't think I noticed that on my first listen. All the Maybe way the back, writer was but... just having a bad day <laughs> when, write, when writing it. Yeah. I don't know. You feel like the Doctor would care. Yeah, normally. Normally does. Normally does. Although, in the Romans, he does start laughing maniacally when Rome is burning down. So, you know. Bye. Ha ha! <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to remember what exactly happened in the Romans because obviously it's been a few years. He caused the great fire of Rome and then laughed about it. <laughs> okay. A typical, uh, yeah, one of those typical moments in which the the protagonist is like given a a drink or something where it seems friendly and then it like makes him pass out <laughs> you know what yeah one of the, and then he wakes up and it's like the worst possible situation yeah that, yeah no yeah that trope was in there it um, was yeah just as to be expected really but it is but it does slightly pick up obviously when the eruption begins yes and as soon as it does begin it does gain this kind of epic Disaster film quality, <laughs> doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. An audio disaster movie. An audio, audio disaster movie, no, not <laughs> a disaster audio drama. Honestly, the first thing I thought was, I wonder, like, in, in our world, when is Vesuvius due to erupt next? Oh my word. Because it can't be that far off. Is there a mark? predictable cycle for. Well, maybe. I don't know. I'm not a. Hmm. I'll have to do some... I'll have to do some research about that. I'm sure the Italians are well prepared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, lots of, den lots of again, denial, even as things, buildings are falling down. There's yes. still no, particularly from Eumachia, who's not really a villain, just incredibly nasty, <laughs> you know, ordering her servants to protect the things, believing that <laughs> she will be saved. Yeah, again, ideas of faith. Yeah. I, d I don't know. They're, they're there. There are some themes, but they are just lightly touched upon. Yeah. It's kind of about fate. Right, like, yeah. Like things destined to happen. And the link between faith avoid. and fate, yeah. Uh, yeah, that, yeah, that's perfect. I mostly felt that in the in the final part. Yeah. But, you know, so are th yeah, that's what I mean. They're not really villains. They're just people who have believed the wrong thing, almost. Mm. Um, perhaps that's what this story was lacking, was a proper villain. Well, there isn't really one. Again, it's just you, Machia and Marinus, who are not particularly nice people, <laughs> but they're not mm. really villains. They haven't yeah, got they it. Yeah, just encounters. Yeah, Marinus, you know, is trying to kill the Doctor, but... Yeah, he's a brute. He's a bit of a brute, you know, there's not much depth there. Yeah. It's a bit wishy-washy. Wishy-washy? Okay, that's the way to explain <laughs> yeah. sure. The script is, at least, or, yeah. So how does the TARDIS get there in the future? I guess they, uh... uh again, this was another problem It's that I excavated, had. and they find a good moment to sneak in. Yeah, I, I thought it was a little bit <laughs> contrived. And Mel even says it feels like we've cheated a little bit. Yeah! Like, yeah. Yeah, it kind of does. I feel a little they, bit They cheesy. wanted a slightly comical ending. I don't know if it's comical. Oh, yeah. Maybe you found it comical. <laughs> I don't know. I don't find it comical. Everybody know. dies. <laughs> well, after that. But they seem to get over it very quickly, anyway, at least. Mel doesn't seem too concerned that all of those people she's just made friends with have now been killed. Although, yeah. Aglay and what's-his-face, presumably, How have we had a story kind of like that? What do you mean? In the sense that they befriend, or a companion, like, friends people, and then they all die, and there's, like, sadness afterwards. Maybe. I don't know. I feel like we've had that before. I just don't know. Maybe, maybe it's just a feeling. I don't know, yeah. I think that's quite a vague question. Yeah. Have we had a get, uh, <laughs> we, someone that the guest cast, that makes friends with yeah, the main cast An apocalyptic cast event that they can't oh, change. okay. There's a moment in Colony in Space where you think everyone is being killed on the on the ship that blows up. You think they're all on board, but it was just one person. Hmm. Yeah, it's quite a vague question. Anyway, um, yeah, maybe my... there is one. It feels very cheated. It feels rushed. 
rushed. That that's not a bad way to describe it as well. Which again, considering part two and three had quite slow moments, <laughs> it's just that you could have probably cut some scenes there and yeah, it's like they couldn't quite decide here. what the story was. Right. Yeah, what they wanted to tell. A little bit vague idea, but then remembered that oh yeah, Vesuvius needs to erupt, so we'll incorporate that. Yeah. Okay. Anything else from you? I think I think I've said. I think I've said what I think. Okay. Yeah. This feels like it's harder to uh, write about. Yeah. It's, like, it's not coming off the pirates as well. Yeah. Well, I, I was. I, well, I I went in not expecting it to be like pirates. <laughs> yeah. I don't think. You know. Yeah. I don't. I don't think it's fair to compare something with. No. The best or one of the best. So. But yeah. Not. Bad, just a bit lacklustre. Okay. Is that a 7.5? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's high. I thought, well, again, I love the production, the design, like directing, it, the music. It's the script that is the weakest part, I think. Mm. Um, so if I were to give that, say, a 5 out of 10, and then the rest of it is probably a 10. Mm. Um, I've, again, I'm averaging that out. I don't think it's bad at all. Yeah. Um, I, I did enjoy it quite a lot, but the writing, the script, is probably the most important part. It is. Especially yeah. for or, something audio based yeah. where you're trying to listen, but for me, I just couldn't get into that. Okay. And as a, a, as a result, the, the other things didn't complement a good story that was there, but was just, you know, it was just there. Okay. That's a shame. It's so okay, this is this is the one that I picked as the best Sylvester McCoy big really? finish as well. Mm. Yeah, of the ones I've listened to, at least uh, uh, the ones that are on Spotify. Yeah, it was a tough choice that one. Okay. Maybe you'd have liked a different one better, but I don't know. Well, okay. I mean, I'm glad I listened to it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Got a good good to get some Seventh Doctor uh, in audio form. Mm-hmm. We we'll, we'll be on to the Eighth Doctor. Yes, well, for me, returning to the Eighth Doctor. Yeah, because you've listened to Storm Warning already. Yes. Which I thought was pretty good. Uh, Chimes of Midnight. Yeah, that'll be the next one. Uh, I know it's the middle of June, but hopefully we can get you into a Christmassy mood. Oh, oh, right. It's it's a Christmassy theme one. Okay. A little bit. <laughs> I know it's boiling hot, but... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. And that's going to be our last big finish in this big finishy run. Yes. Well, we'll see you then. Right. Bye.